Good evening. Some of the country's top rap music artists have been paying tribute to a Birmingham rapper who was stabbed to death at the weekend. 18-year-old Joshua Rivera, whose stage name was Deb's Man, was seen as a rising star. Every time that I see your face, I feel the pain. When I'm on road, just knowing that you ain't here, don't feel the same. I miss you, bro. Love you, bro. Swear I wish I could hug you, bro. I need you, bro. A rising star honouring his tragically murdered friend. A jealous rival looking for any excuse to swing a knife. An 18-year-old boy with a stab to the heart, fighting to survive with every cell of his being. This is the tragic story of the artist known as Depp's Man, and his premature death on the night of September 20th, 2013. Growing up in Birmingham, Joshua Ribera found fitting in difficult. He had ADHD and would often get into trouble as a young child. But as he grew into a young man, Josh distanced himself from any sketchy entourages, instead fixing on what would become his medium of self-expression, music. Yo. I gotta do me. Why would I try and be anyone else? I am myself is only one of me. I'm his so album Be Real was released in July 2013. In just a short amount of time, 18-year-old Ribera had climbed to the top of iTunes' hip-hop chart. But in spite of being a rising star of the grime genre, Ribera was an openly sensitive artist. He posted photos with his grandmother, Linda, for his followers to see. And his most listened track to this day is a song called One Love. One love to the man in my circle, we're gonna make it, yeah, that's for certain. One love to the haters pushing me to pick up the mic and keep working. One Rivera's love openness and affection was comforting and inspirational to his fans. But what many did not know is that it had come from a place of pain. In 2009, Joshua's father, Anselm Ribera, was convicted of murder. On the 9th of January 2009, Ribera and two other men armed with a handgun and a sledgehammer burst into a post office with the intent to rob it. The office was located in the quaint village of Fairfield, Worcestershire, and was precisely the sort of place an armed robbery would have been nothing short of unexpected. Kenneth and Judy Hodson Walker were inside the post office when the attack happened. Their son, 29-year-old Craig, ran down from their flat in an attempt to defend them from the robbers. Armed with a cricket bat, the young man had no idea what he was up against. Unwilling to take any damage, 34-year-old Ribera shot Hodson Walker at point-blank range. But Ribera was actually supposed to have been imprisoned long before this incident. Ribera's details were circulated on the police national computer in September 2008, after his DNA was matched to evidence recovered from two post office robberies a few miles apart. The two previous robberies had taken place in March and May 2008. Ribera therefore already has a reputation, but it took the death of a 29-year-old innocent for him to be detained. Ribera was sentenced to 21 years for attempted robbery, another 21 years for possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life, and 34 years for attempted murder. The other two men involved in the attack were given similar sentences. Ribera left behind Josh, his teenage son, after taking away the life of another young man, shooting him in the heart. Ribera would be struck with a very harsh truth only four years later, that history is bound to repeat itself, this time at the expense of his own child. Alison Cope, Joshua Ribera's mother recalls the lifelong impact that his father's actions had on him. When I said the word murder, Josh just demolished the front room. He smashed everything up. He was crying. He was angry. His dad was the scum of the earth, as was quoted in a newspaper. His dad was a murderer. His dad had destroyed a young man's life. The police were stopping and searching him and saying things like, Where's your dad, Josh? and then he would erupt. Josh's behavior took a wrong turn after the conviction of his father, but after being sent to a young offender institution for theft, Ribera became set on turning his life around. The grime see my team are running it still And the way that I'm spitting is nothing but ill My man don't want it with me though You best to go make a coffee music career was quick to take off amongst fans of grime. Prior to his debut album, 
Ribera's biggest success was his win at the Lord of the Mics rap battle in 2012. But the star's life, known under the stage name Depp's Man, would be tragically cut short only a few months after the release of his first album. This is his story. On the 20th of September 2013, Ribera headed over to TC's club in the Selly Oak area of Birmingham. The rapper was attending a fundraiser event for Kyle Sheehan, a former friend who had been fatally stabbed at the age of 16. Sheehan's death had taken place exactly a year before, on the 21st of September 2012. The aim of the fundraiser was for a headstone to be placed on Sheehan's grave. Sheehan was walking back from playing football when he was stabbed in the leg in Bartley Green Park. He would later pass away as a result of the 28th of September. I went through such a lot from Friday. As you know, his leg was amputated, his kidneys failed, his liver failed. He just, bless him, went through so much. Somebody needs to come forward and let us know because we're in limbo now. We can do nothing until somebody, Carl had a, lots and lots of friends and somebody needs to speak to the police and just let's get, don't let him die in vain. We need justice for what happened to him. He was 16. To this day, the 16 year old's killer is yet to be identified. We haven't got sufficient evidence to charge anybody with murder and that's why we need people to come forward. There were 20 to 30 people fighting and as you would probably assume we make a number of arrests around disorders of that sort of incidents. But we know there were people stood by Kyle and would have seen him being stabbed and would have seen who did it as well. We need them to be brave today and come forward to the police. While at the fundraiser, joined by a young woman, Ribera spots Armani Mitchell, also known under the moniker Switch. They walk past each other. As Ribera walks away, Mitchell turns around and follows Ribera. A confrontation ensues, but Ribera walks away, unwilling to give in to Mitchell's taunts. As the two men pass each other again, Mitchell once again turns around and follows Ribera outside. This time, a larger altercation takes place. The woman Ribera is with turns out to be Rudy Lee, Mitchell's ex, and the mother of his 20-month-old child. Ribera ends up punching Mitchell. In a fit of jealousy, Mitchell threatens to wet Ribera, meaning that he would stab him. But Ribera turns around and walks back into the club. Eventually, Mitchell is thrown out of the venue, but he returns wearing a different set of clothes. This time, he is also bearing a hunting knife. As Ribera leaves the club, Mitchell, along with another man, can be seen following him. In a final confrontation, Mitchell swings at Ribera, stabbing him through the heart. Then he flees the scene. Hanging on to his life, Ribera walks back into the club, using his t-shirt to relieve his bleeding heart before collapsing. A woman at the scene performs CPR on him before paramedics arrive. In his final moment of consciousness, Ribera whispers to the name, Switch to the paramedics. Surgeons performed open heart surgery on Ribera for six hours, replacing all of his blood. The young star suffered five cardiac arrests on the operating table before finally passing away. I can't remember the drive home. I just remember coming in here and it being left how it was when I left the previous evening. Josh's bedroom door was open trainers after shave as he'd left it and then I just sat on the kitchen floor I, I don't know why but cold cold surfaces kind of kept me alert so in the hospital I sat on the floor at home I came and sat on the kitchen floor on the tiles and then I just screamed and screamed and screamed is this video answering your questions want to know more Make sure you check out our other videos for more true crime stories like this one. Shortly before 11 p.m. on the 20th of September, local police received a report of a stabbing having taken place at TC's club. 
It is around 11.45 p.m. on that same night that 18-year-old Armani Mitchell turns himself in at a police station in Dudley. His accomplice, a 19-year-old from Edgebaston, is also arrested after turning himself into Blockswich Police Station the following day. He is later released. As soon as Depsman's death was made public, online tributes from fellow artists and fans alike started pouring in. I can't actually describe it. He's not, he's not gone to me. Like, as you can see, he's not gone anywhere. When it's somebody this young, it pulls people up short, and therefore people are much more, I think, confused, possibly angry, um, and maybe even full of a bit of despair, and therefore that makes it a much more raw occasion for people. Many of his songs were reposted online in the outpour of grief, including his tribute to Kyle Sheehan, the friend whose memorial Ribera had attended on September 20th. The news of the stabbing shocked the club's local community. One local resident was quoted the next day after Depsman's death. I can't believe it would happen around here. This is a student area, not a bad area. There's no one around at the moment because of the holidays, so I have no idea who would be around. It makes you worry to be out in this part of Birmingham at night. Although Mitchell, the police's primary suspect, remained in custody, he denied murder. There was a huge lack of information regarding what had actually happened that night. To this day, there are still parts law enforcement believe to be missing from the timeline. In November 2013, police released images of 10 witnesses that they wanted to speak to in connection with Ribera's death. The motive for the stabbing was still unclear, and there was a possibility it might have been linked to organized crime. Joshua's mum, Alison Cope, appealed directly to those in the images to come forward. She said, I would like to personally ask all the people shown in the images today to spend a moment imagining someone had killed you, broke your mother's heart and the hearts of your family and friends. Would you want people to come forward for you and for your mother? Yes, you would. Don't be seen as the person who didn't help put the pieces together in this investigation. You might feel the information you have isn't important, but it is. And I need you to help me, so please contact the police. A motive for the crime, however, did soon come to light, and it shocked all those grieving the unfortunate Ribera. The woman Ribera was seen with by Mitchell, Rudy Lee, was the killer's ex as well as the mother of his child. The couple regularly argues over custody and access to the child. On the night of the stabbing, Mitchell saw Rudy Lee at the bar and confronted her over why she is not at home looking after their child. She said he held up his hand and told her she had five minutes to leave, or he would beat her up. She says she told him to shut up and walked away. Later that same evening, she was seen with Ribera. The motive for Mitchell's killing appeared to be jealousy and misdirected anger towards Ribera. Rudy Lee said the reason she was with Ribera was that he appeared to be very drunk and told her he felt sick, so she offered to take him home. However, it is believed that Ribera also offered Lee some sort of protection from her violent ex. The aftermath of the killing saw a swift four-week trial, with the judge concluding your criminal activity really only lasted for about 30 seconds, from the time it took to leave the club when you took out the knife to the moment that you used it. So I accept there was a lack of premeditation. Before you used the knife, you had already been struck once by Joshua Ribera in an earlier incident. During the trial, Mitchell denied murder, instead saying that he was carrying the knife for protection. Mitchell claimed that he closed his eyes and swung the hunting knife in a bid to scare the rapper. Unbeknownst to him, allegedly, he had stabbed him in the heart. Mitchell said, my hand was in my pocket, on my knife. I thought if I brandished the knife, he would back off and I would have enough time to run away. I closed my eyes and swung the knife in front of me so he would see it. I didn't think I had stabbed him. My intention was to scare him away. That's what I thought did happen. I got away and he was unhurt. He said it was only the next day when he handed himself into police that he was told of Ribera's fate. 
However, the judge argued that Mitchell deliberately lunged at Ribeiro with the knife, with the intent to harm him. This was supported by witnesses claiming that Mitchell had threatened to stab Ribeiro earlier in the night. Aless Broadfield, who knew both men, told the court that Ribeiro came up to her in an outside smoking area and appeared angry. She said Ribeiro told her Mitchell had just threatened to stab him. The judge sentenced Mitchell to a minimum of 18 years in prison. Tension spilled over into arrests at this murder trial. The victim, Joshua Ribeiro, was a rising music star. His fans angered and distraught at his violent death. Today there was uproar in the public gallery as the guilty verdict was read out. Joshua Ribeiro's mother is still in a state of shock at the death of her only son. There's no justice for Joshua because he was too special and too amazing. He could have got, had 100 years in prison and it still wouldn't be justice, but he's, there's justice served for killing another person. Ribera's tragic death left a lot of friends, fans and family hurting, but he also left behind a legacy. His mother believes that Ribera died on the happiest day of his life. That same morning, Ribera had learned how much he'd made from the pre-order sales of his album, which had hit number one in the iTunes charts earlier in 2013. As soon as he saw it, he was so happy. He went and spent the lot on me and his family and friends, she reveals. He bought me a Michael Kors watch and had it gift wrapped. He gave it to me saying, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be the person I am now. And I love you forever to the end. Moreover, Ribera's story has been used as a vehicle for knife crime awareness for the past 10 years. It is widely believed his mother's campaigns against knife crime and the awareness brought on by Ribera's death have saved countless young lives. Josh's friends say they hope his high profile will at least make people talk about knife crime. Depp is like known and he's looked up to by so many kids and like he could, like, seriously, like, this could change everything we own. Following Ribera's death, Birmingham's crime commissioner, Bob Jones, created anonymous knife drop-off points around Birmingham. They were aimed at youths who were concealing weapons, urging them to think twice about their actions. Nine years on from Depp's man's premature death, in October 2022, McCann London brought Ribera back to life using deepfake technology. The music video featuring Ribera rapping about his life and tragic death was commissioned by the Joshua Ribera Foundation, the charity that combats knife crime in his name. The video is titled Life Cut Short, and it features an eerily lifelike version of Ribera rapping about the events of the 20th of September 2013. Before the night when everything ended and it tore my family apart Before the night we went to remember bro when our dads were bleeding the heart The lyrics to the song easy. were ghost written by Midlands like rappers me. Shadow CV and T. Rhodes The project benefited from the support of Ribera's mum My name is Alison Cope I'm an anti-knife campaigner and I'm Depp's man's mum Using technology I have brought my son back to deliver this message from beyond the grave the anti-knife campaign played in schools all over the UK in hopes of educating a future generation against knife crime. The video also played in 65 prisons. Alison Cope, Depp's man's mother, said of the campaign, I just received a message from a young man who was going out last night with a knife to deal with a situation. He watched the video and told me he just couldn't go out with the knife because it wouldn't be worth him losing his family. What is your opinion on this tragic story? At The Decoder, we compile videos based on multiple credible sources to bring you the truth about true crimes. Your support is what keeps us going, so make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on your way out. And we will see you next time on The Decoder.